Hello everyone and welcome back to Susa Place and to our Nurgle team in Blood Bowl 2. We have gotten a few level ups in our last match. We're also still positive on the record, more wins than losses. As long as we can keep that, we're fine here I suppose. But now let's see what we get on all these level ups. First of all we have a warrior who has leveled up. And for that we have another uh, regular level. I do think we should get block early on. Usually I will go... well, usually. I have never played a Nurgle team other than this one. But uh, on Chaos I usually get two guys with block first and then the other two guys who are a little bit behind get mighty blow first. That way they catch up a little bit faster without needing touchdowns. And uh, on, on Nurgle you can't really give them touchdowns because of agility too, unless you risk risk not uh, scoring at all. And so far we haven't uh, gotten in a game where we've had the uh, luxury to be able to give the ball to our Nurgle warriors. But seeing how this these two are a little bit ahead, they start with block and then they get guard. That way they assist better and are tougher for opponents to deal with, but they don't really deal the damage. And then we get Mighty Blow on these two first, and then Claw and as the second skill, and then they will catch up and get Block as their third skill. That's uh, my plan at least, but uh, it rarely works out the way you plan it. But uh, that's uh, probably what I will do with them, unless someone rolls plus strength, which is uh, something I would like to take. Right, here we have a Pestigore. Now, we did level two of our Pestigores, so we can actually choose... We can look at both the rolls and see if one of them rolls a double for dodge or perhaps agility. We can make that player the ball carrier. But if we roll normal on the first, perhaps we should go back and check what the other gets. But uh, actually, when we roll normal on the first, we uh, we can agree that we can make the second one the ball carrier either way. Really, if you roll a plus on a stat, strength or agility, that's best for the ball carrying Pestigore, I would think. And a double for dodge would probably be best for the ball carrying Pestigore as well. So... Uh, no, nothing here, a normal level up. I'm gonna get a Frenzy. I've missed having a Frenzy. Especially in the open ladder, there are some players that will not be on the lookout for Frenzy and place their players where they can be served. So having a Frenzy uh, Blitz option with 4 strength is pretty good. That means this is the ball carrier then, unless... Oh, we rolled a 10. Hmm, well that's interesting. I mean, movement is good, but I wonder if it's good enough to skip a regular skill. If anything, I would have liked the movement on, perhaps, the Frenzy Goat. I'm thinking also of making that our Tackle, who can be the safety. Because Tackle is a low priority skill here. But we need some of the tackles to deal with opponent lodgers. Having a movement on, tack on the tackle guy is pr probably pretty good. But I don't know if we want to start by getting that. It's probably more important to get the tackle or the wrestle as the first skill. But we do need someone with shore hands. So I'm going to make this our, our ball carrier and pick up shore hands. So we stop dropping the ball all the time. Now, if we if we roll agility on the fourth one, well, then we were not lucky enough, I guess. We do need another rotter, and I I believe I had a suggestion for a name. Let me quickly check that. Someone said something about a name in one of the videos where I mentioned that you could suggest names for the rotters. I think I want the the rest of them to be the names I've chosen go with the theme of the team, but 
Let's see, what do I click? I click here. And then I go here. Very exciting this for you. Scroll down a bit. Someone suggested Rotterdam Ron. I think that was a suggestion for a name. So uh, let's buy a Rotter. Thought we'd be getting these guys for free. Let's call him Rotterdam Ron. Ron. It doesn't quite go with the rest of the team's theme. It's difficult to say. But uh, we can always say that we got this guy as a as a free recruit from their opponent team. If someone would ask. Or we could just say that uh, we chose the name ourselves, which would be more true. Uh, and confirm purchases. So now we do have a full team here, which is good. Lamb, of course, would stand firm. Let's hope he doesn't take it quite as literally and fail all his beast move movement rolls. Wild animal movement. And we're going to have to wait a little bit, but you guys don't. So I will see you again once we find a proponent. Which is going to be dwarves. Alright, let's see how we deal with dwarves. Too bad we don't have any claw. That would be nice. So these dwarves have a death roller. And the coach is level 6. I'm encouraged by this. They all have guard. That's not a good thing. That's pretty bad, actually. Looks like God is the skill chosen for everyone who's leveled up. Yes, God makes them very difficult to deal with. He has two coach assistants. He has lost 2 nothing, one 2 nothing, lost, tied 0-0 zero, zero twice, and lost. So he hasn't got that good of a record. Which is also encouraging, I suppose. Well, with one mighty, two mighty blow, can't forget about the beast. There's not much we can do against them. And look, he gets some petty cash as well. Quite a bit, actually. Because dwarves are cheaper. Just start off here. A bribe to keep his uh, death roller on the field. Probably. With the bribe we would like to start on offense, but on the other hand... On the other hand, if he starts on offense, then he's not going to be able to keep it on the field if he scores. And if he doesn't score, then we're still going to be ahead. A babe as well. Pretty standard choice for, for dwarves with a death roller, I would, I would say. Now, if we start on offense, we would hope to. Did he have an extra player? He can't have had an extra player, not with that sort of uh, team value. Uh, then we would have to hope to injure one more for second half uh, to get the death roller, to force the death roller onto the field on the second drive after we, he uses his bribe. And then we score before turn 8. Actually, we score on turn 8, force him to play that one extra or not use the bribe. Of course, I forgot to check if he actually had 12 players, but I think it's... Oh, what was it? 6 or 7 level ups? And the standard lineup? He should have had uh, only 11 players. Okay, well... 
And let's start an offense then. Apparently, he got two injuries and a death last time he played Nurgle. Let's hope that happens again. Yep, he didn't have any extras. That means if we can get one injury, and if he sets up like this, we get a great opportunity to test our frenzy guy. Oh, he does. Well then. I would hope to score quickly there. Uh, however, we're gonna stay away from the death bubble. I'm gonna take a hit on dwarves on the side like this, using block. Then I'm going to not stand next to the death roller. Maybe he'll run it into our beast? You think he'd do that for me? And this guy's gonna blitz. Now which of them do we want to push out? Do we want to get rid of his runner? Or this guy with God. It's already an injury roll, so armor doesn't matter if you manage to push him into the crowd. Let's use our... Where's his frenzy guy? He could actually... If we put him here, it's gonna take a hit. But that's fine. And then he blitzes here and steps away from the edge. I think that's okay. Can actually put this guy back here then. And you prevent the road through there. Used to hit on the line. Uh, maybe I should put this guy out here as a safety. Alright, let's go with this and see how our opponent's positioning game is. Oh well, there's the first guy. Ah, perfect. Now I don't have to worry about him surfing me back. And I can actually avoid standing this guy in in these two tackle zones. So I'll assist over here instead. But the ball landing back here isn't great. Oh well it's not terrible. He's not gonna threaten us like the, the Skaven did. Stun is not a casualty, right? Okay, so this is going to be strength 4, 5. Do I want to do that first? Well, I sort of committed now. Push. Not like a real. That's a shame, though. Back again. He has no uh, assist right now, so we're not going to move him unless we find a good spot. Maybe I should have kept him on me. That's just a regular guy. If I go up here, tie him up. Uh, he's gonna frenzy me out. Could go there, but he doesn't have block. I think I'll go in here, activate this guy. Then I'll pick up the ball. Didn't need sure hands. None of the dwarves can really threaten us, but it could be good to keep this guy here. Do I want to move this guy? Could put him up here. If he blitzes forward here, that's not the greatest, but on the other hand, if you move him, it's still not the greatest. So I'll, I'll keep him there. If he blitzes with the death roller, well, we're gonna have to deal with that. 
Maybe put him here so he can't push us away from... That was risky. I should probably not have done that. If he had done stupid there, we would have been in a worse position. There's no real pla good place to tie up the dwarves. Since they have so much guard, it's not really benefiting us. They're slow enough anyway. I would like to get him between the ball carrier and and the opponent line though. But that's going to be next turn, so I'm trying to keep him open for now. Going back because that means that his death roller is going to be further stuck inside our lines. Maybe we can we can deal with it. But I'd rather not hit the death roller. It is too high a strength than the beast. So we would need three assists to be able to take a two die, even with the beast. Unfortunate that we didn't manage to to push this guy out. Form appearance would be nice here. Ooh, there we go. Tried to reroll it through Loner and failed. So that wasted a reroll for him as well. Well, we could take a. <laughs> he is not too fond of our. Or a foul appearance. Knock down. Right, so we could take a negative 2 die here, although he has stand firm, so that's not the best. Uh, we could also push this guy off. No, that won't work. Can't surf that guy unless I do this dodge, which is not very good. Um, and next time, this guy is gonna start being a trouble troublemaker again. Maybe I just try to push him and go through, and then blitz him like that. Okay, well let's try that. If he was on this side, we could have gone for him. Could maybe move through here, although I need to move up first. I think I'm just gonna keep him there. And then this guy comes up, ties up these two. Blitz with you here. Bring this guy into the middle so you can blitz on both sides. Um, right, this first. We don't have a safe move. Hopefully he won't be able to move away from there to, to surf us. That's too bad. Put him on the edge just because and we have to move him first. And then move back one. I think we're safe from this guy, right? We could dodge to surf him. Let's go over here. 
You can't go through there. Let's take a one die on this guy. Uh, probably not worth a reroll. Wouldn't have served him anyway. There's a bunch of free guys over here, but they can't get too far. These two are free, so we could organize a hit on him. That doesn't get him any closer to the ball. If he runs too much over to this side, of course we can swing over this side perhaps. Uh, the Frenzy Pestigor can reach both sides now if it puts anyone too close to the edge, like here. It's gonna make a GFI as his first move. If he moves him in there, he actually has a 2 die here with Dauntless. And he has a 2 die there already. He managed to hit on Nurgle Warrior this time. He didn't follow. So we can keep keep doing that if we want to, or we can choose not to. Uh, he got the hit on the other Nurgle Warrior as well. So this side is not looking very promising. Looks like he doesn't want to contact with him. I would probably try to keep one dwarf on each Nurgle Warrior to keep them out of the other side. Dauntless. He f uh, no, he made Dauntless. I thought he failed Dauntless. Oh, did he? Let me see. Yeah, he, he made Dauntless. I thought he rerolled it for a second. This is a 2. Still hasn't moved this guy, so... We can't really surf him, we can almost surf him. There he goes. Why would you... Oh, he wants to make this hit afterwards. Follow them. And now he has plus three and he can hit the beast easily. Although, for foul appearance, but he rerolled that. No. For some reason I think he is failing foul appearance when he's not. Of course we stand firm here and keep all his dwarfs on the beast. And now we could actually just hand the ball to this guy and run. If the handoff worked. I don't think he can catch us. This guy's the one we have to watch out for, maybe. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. We make two GFIs, he can't catch us. Extra step, doesn't matter. Oh, he did put a, a dwarf on each of these. Fair enough. Let's we'll stand them up. Stand that guy up as well. And you, I suppose. And you. Now, if this worked, it would be pretty good, because that would sort of force him to go around. But he'd still catch us. Is there anything else we can do to stop him? We could blitz this guy with someone. And tag him. That's not a bad idea. Push would almost be enough, but a knockdown. I guess he can he can uh, just hit this back, I suppose. Even if we put someone in there. Okay, now we're now we're very much committed here. I don't think I'll be hitting with the uh, Nugget Warrior now because if he uh, sorry with the beast because if he fails that, uh, we have. A stand there is probably better, right? And then hand off to him. The hand off still is 67%. So 
Does this guy not need to do anything? I'll move him here just in case I drop the ball. It's better to have him on that side, I think. So, uh, one in three risk of dropping the ball. We made it. I will check where I need to, how many GFIs I need to make. I think he is able to free this guy up. One, two, three, four. That means we need to make a GFI and then another GFI since we still have a reload. And he should score next turn. Didn't want to get stupid here because then he could have freed up this guy and he could have blitzed. Now he's on tentacles. This guy's free, but he can't reach much. It's a little bit too early to score almost. Because if he uses his bribe, keeps his death over, he might be able to score on us back. At least then there won't be a death roller for second half. Did he just hit with him? Okay. Ouch. Well, he's gonna recover. You can see it if you look at the player card, because there's no icon here for the injury. There was also no uh, injury above his head there. It didn't play the animation either, which it does. I have uh, animations on armor breaks. If he manages to push the beast off here, it would be pretty good, but we have, he has two miners there. And uh, this guy doesn't provide an assist. He could try to hit here. Although it's minus one, plus one, he'd give a, get a one die if Dauntless works, and then push him off, and then he would have a plus two for a one die on him, and then this guy could be free to blitz the ball. He is too far away, although he can come in here and add an assist here, which would be pretty good. Blitzing him, well, then you're not blitzing this guy, of course. But he does get the two die. That means he does get a two die on this as well. With him, if the office works. He tries for a one die push. Also, skull. We roll into a push. But uh, pushes, of course, does not affect us. That means this guy still has to beat tentacles if he's going to dodge us. Which he might. But if he does, we just blitz here and push him off the score. Oh, he beat tentacles. He did a 9, and he got it. And he made an extra move there. Not sure exactly why he wanted the other guy. Ah, oh, the other guy would actually have prevented us, forced us to dodge. Just a push here on a blitz would be enough. This guy's too far away to assist. But it would be nice to get him upfield in case we uh, somehow lose the ball. Although, are we willing to make a se uh, another block with block two dice in order to get him free? I think that's fair. That's good enough. This guy comes around to here, prevent others from coming up and assisting. This guy goes to here just in case we roll a double skull here, or a 1 in 9 twice. I don't think I want to make any other blocks. I don't want to go stupid here, I don't want to roll a turnover. This one's pretty safe I suppose, but if we do this one we push one of his guys closer. And the chance of breaking dwarf armor is pretty bad. So blitz here. Push is all we need. Ah. Uh, okay. We had to use a reroll. 
but we got him. And we got our touchdown. Now, he has the option to use the bribe. I think he will. Ref took it. No one there. Roll a six. And uh, that means the death roller is on for this drive as well. But this is only going to be five turns. Now, problem is, we're going to have to put something on the line that's a little bit more valuable than our rotter. Let's go for zero SPP warrior. I'm going to spread him out. That way he at least has to assist on the other two. And the death roller is only going to tag one of them. And then I'm going to put these centrally. We'll have and this guy as centrally as possible as well. Maybe something like this will be good. Have them able to go to whatever side he goes to. Ideally, we steal the ball here and score again. Well, of course. Drunken Rednecks, Billy Bob. Let me see, Stumbling Jim. The other one has a standard name. Low Core. Jimmy. He gets three names, is all he could muster. Maybe they all died after that. So he commits a lot of players to the line here. He doesn't need this many to knock down our three linemen. That means the backfield's going to be less protected. Unfortunately, uh, Nurgle don't have the speed really to get up there, but against Elves this would be pretty dangerous. Or Skaven, of course. Ooh, that was a, a little bit of a nice kick there, but no, it was actually fine. Just short. For some reason it kicked from up there. Okay, that's from the first. Three die. That's perhaps a reason I should have kept them closer, but I need to just hit the guys on the side first and got them down three day anyway. Pushes us away. Doesn't want this death roller tied up. The death roller has break tackle, which makes it pretty good at dodging once. Ouch! Lots of them wrong. And uh, he's still only gonna miss again. So that's about as lucky as you can get as a water. Here goes Hangnail. Fair enough. The dwarves have broken contact. Tie up three of them with the beast, but I don't really want to tie up a troll slayer. At least not a troll slayer that's standing up. It was a dauntless, allowing him to to hit the beast without too much trouble. Is he gonna blitz this warrior then, since he's tagging him? Not with the Troll Slayer. I'm gonna blitz him with the Blitzer. Foul appearance. Doesn't work. Push. That's the result. Okay, now he has to pick up the ball. Can bring this guy back to here, and then it's pretty safe even if he fails to pick up. But uh, it's not that bad, even if he should miss miss it here. 
If it drops here, I guess we could get someone onto it. Which could be a nuisance. I guess he's gonna try to stand here if he picks it up. Or maybe he's just gonna keep this shield in front of it. The question is, where do we commit our Beast of Nurgle? Do we try to put him over here, maybe? And then blitz this Troll Slayer so that he's not on his feet. Maybe we blitz the Troll Slayer first, push the Troll Slayer there, and put the Beast there. We'd have to commit a bit to to get that. We can't get to here, because we have, don't have enough movement. Uh, I don't want to commit this guy to anything. Same here, really. I'll just stand these two up as a shield. I think I can lure him down this side, then have plenty of players left behind here. Like this. Okay, let's try to get that troll slayer. Great. Water break. Put him back in the middle so he can go to the other side again. Now you, if you want to move, yes. Tie up two dwarves and the troll slayer. We might get a hit back on him. That's not too bad. Someone next to him would also be good. Maybe like that. I want to give him too much of a maturity. I'm just going to give him one pesty word to deal with up there. And he can be there. So now he has to blitz here and try to make a cage down here, which is not very good. He leaves De Death Roller off, off the play. He blitz, because this is too far to blitz for the Death Roller. Or he could, but... Uh, probably not. So what we want, would want to do is tie these two up, blitz him, and I would hope that he'd had to commit everybody else to the cage, so we can move all these four to sort of trap the cage out there. Okay, well, going for the ball carry. Well, that's a turnover, unless he can beat Loner on the Death Roller this time. No, he cannot. Well, that's interesting. I'm not sure exactly what he tried to accomplish. Maybe that hit, knock down the beast and go over here. Oh, he has Juggernaut. Never mind. I don't think he, he realized he had Juggernaut either. Because he wouldn't have rerolled that with Loner. But, of course, the death roll started with Juggernaut. Fall appearance. No, right? That's not a uh, failed fall appearance. It just means that he's going to roll it. That's a skull, however. That's a pretty terrible turn. I mean, he did accomplish the fact that he pushed us away from. Uh, from the beasts, so we now can't activate it unless we do that. I do think our blitz will be here. Before we do that, however, put you there. I don't want to overcommit. I think I'll keep these two back at least. 
Maybe even step away from this guy because he's going to be had hit from by the death row the next turn. So I'm gonna step back with him. And you go in and tie up these two. Not sure about that, you could pretty easily hit him there. We'll take this hit. It's a push. So I will activate a beast and try to hit him. Good. Good lucky maybe. But now he's in a good spot and the uh, uh, troll slayer is stunned. So let's try this move. One GFI. I'll take it both down if I don't have an option. Mm. With two rerolls in three turns. Sure. There we go. Maybe that'll allow us a chance at picking up that ball. Uh, well, he's gonna get to us either way. He's gonna have to hit this guy, right? He's tied up. He can free a one up there, but he's gonna blitz this guy either way, so we don't really need to step up there. He's not likely to pick it up with a long bear that is before he blitzes us anyway. Question is, do we want to. Yeah, we want to do this now. Since his ball carrier is stunned, we can afford to be a little bit more aggressive. Move one of our spare guys up a bit. He's not gonna be able to re cage somewhere else. Unless he makes a dwarf pass. He doesn't. Um, this guy could have picked it up, but now we sort of blocked him. And all of these guys have two agility, which means it's a 50% to pick it up. Not terrible. I mean, 50% is possible. But not something you would like to try. Oops. You managed to get a stun on a Chaos Warrior. Sorry, Nurgle Warrior. At least I remember the ones. It just looks so much like Chaos Warrior. Well. I'm better at calling them Pestigors, I think. So yeah, he's gonna blitz with this guy for two guys. From there, push him there, then move up. But who is he picking up the ball with? Probably no one. Not easily at least. He could get this guy free and try try to pick up the ball. And well we can free up the rotter here. And this guy could blitz, and then the rotter could go five. Uh, it's a little bit too far away, I'd say. Let's see, it's a little bit more to see first. I think he's gonna try this hit with Dauntless. Wait, no, he, he hit with the other guy. I guess if he wants to score, he wants to be quicker. And therefore, he wants five movement. See, when you're playing as dwarves, you you really need to put someone in scoring range on turn six. Normally, it's turn seven where you think, oh, I have to have someone up here in scoring range. Dwarves have to consider it already on turn six. Uh, I need to be over here so I can be over here on turn seven. And I don't think he has anyone close enough right now. This guy could get there. He can move 4 plus 2 every turn. So 6 to here. 5 to there. 3 GFIs to score with this guy. Although he's kind of tied up at the moment. A 70, 17 pass into 17 catch. Not gonna happen. And we of course gonna pick that 
the salt on the block time. He did get the ball though. But he does not have a scoring threat. So I think we will try to get a scoring threat. We could free up this pestigo actually. If we knock him down, we could blitz the ball. And then this guy could be a scoring threat. I'm gonna stand up here. He's gonna move up. This fellow's gonna move up. I'm gonna do this first to free him up. Because if we don't get him in scoring range, we're not scoring. Regardless if we get the ball or not. So this is actually more important than taking a hit on the ball carry. I'm not gonna make a GFI, he's gonna make a GFI next turn instead. Uh, since we might need a reroll for other things. You come up here to tie up these two so they can't respond. Uh, am I going to have to put someone onto the Death Roller so he can't respond? I don't like it, especially not these two. I kind of want to keep them. Okay, let's do this. Hope it's a knockdown. It's not. But we could trust the beast. I'm gonna have to dodge as well, I realize. Fair enough. I wanna keep these two. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's probably what we have to do here. Do I want to tag the Death Roller? If I make this, I want to tag the Death Roller. If I don't make this, I don't want to tag the Death Roller. If that makes sense. I'm gonna put this guy there now. So, I won't tag the Death Roller yet. But if I manage to knock the ball loose here, I'm gonna have to tie up the Death Roller for this guy. Can pick it up next time. Uh, okay, well. Let's just stand there. And put the death. Uh, I mean. Hmm. I think I have someone who can hit him if he goes to this side, so I'm going to put him on that side. I mean, he's not getting all the way down there. The death roll could get to the end zone, but it can't uh, catch the ball. This guy, however, is going to be the scoring threat. Just go for him. A mighty blow. Goat, highest level player. He's fine. Thank him. Just stays there. That's not a very good use of that ruler. Managed to get a push to free up another long beard. That long beard can't reach the end zone in two turns. Dodging from tentacles is not what you'd like to do. And if he pushed him up, he could actually try to surf him. But that gives up the scoring threat. Really? No. It's sunny as well. Plus, of course, disturbing presence on the catch. So this is minus one to passing rolls. Agility two. Appearance on the beasts. Are you dodging him? It's gonna try to pass. Well, we get a 1 in 6 to intercept then. Nope. Right. Well, we're gonna have to make a pass in the sun. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's probably a 5 plus. And we'd have to clear this guy. If we could assist him on him, that would also be good. 
maybe blitz him. One, two, three, four, five, six. One GFI to make it an easier pickup. Hmm, that might be worth it as well. You're not doing anything. Could still make it. Okay, let's try to push this guy away. I'm not gonna follow that in case he needs the space. Or is it better to, to blitz with him? It's no good angle. I think we blitz with this guy. Also, it's fine to blow this way. Perfect. Now let's get out of the way for our friend here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven is probably probably moved. You come up here. Get a push here. So you can't intercept. And do we want to try to hit here? Oh, well. That was probably the best time all, all, all half he could have gotten a really stupid. Okay, here we go. 67 pickup. Need that one. And as you can see, it is currently a 17% pass, but if we go here, it will be 33 at least. We do have a reroll for it. Oh, we made the pass. We make the catch. Yes. One GFI then. That's all that's needed. And we have a reroll for it. And of course we... It's a sickening play. And of course, his uh, his death roll is sent off. That probably means we can afford to put the Beast of Nurgle on the line, but no, definitely we will not do that. We're missing, yeah, we're missing one player. Uh, so we're gonna have to put both our warriors on the line here. And of course this water. The rest of them should be placed far 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 away. Further than any dwarves can run. So about here we should probably do it. Two, three, four, five. Mm. I think this is good enough. He's not gonna make this many GFIs without a reroll. I'm putting him together this time because it's gonna make it harder for him to hit this warrior. Maybe I should have put the roster in the middle. That would have made it easier for him to hit the warriors. We'll see. He has frenzy to care about as well. And the good thing about them being dwarves is that when we're this far back, we can still reach them if we get a blitz. I'm not sure I would want to, but... It's a reroll. It's his reroll then. We might try to blitz with that. Two, three, four, five. You need two GFIs to hit us with one of his fastest players. This guy is going to hit us with one GFI, but he's not going to. From there. He's going to hit the Rotter. 
could have taken the block to uh, keep her in the spot. But that would have denied him this hit. Could also have moved the guy up to make sure there was a 2 die into 2 die. Pointless. So all the didn't work. That's gonna be bad though. So definitely move someone on that side. Dauntless makes it so it's a uh, one die. But Dauntless could have failed and of course he could have rolled a skull there. Then he gets a two die on the final one. And he can blitz this guy. The question is, do you think he'll foul here? Try to get a man advantage in the second half. We have one out, he has one out. This guy is a little bit more expensive though. If you think about it, he's actually spent 250 team value on this guy. Because he got paid 100 team value for a bribe and 150 for the death roll itself. I believe that's the cost. Is it 150 or is it more? No, I think it's 150. That's the problem with death rollers. They're pretty hard to deal with when they're on the pitch. But you have to spend even more to keep them on the pitch. And of course they're very expensive. It's not going to make the one SPP pass here. And it doesn't look like he's blitzing. Why is he not blitzing? Maybe he's thinking it's second half. Uh, that's probably what it was. Oops. Alright, well, we do we do want our regular setup now. Let's do this. Uh, and same idea as last time. He's shown that he's pretty prone to falling into frenzy traps. He's gonna do that on the next turn. Maybe we can... Ooh, you know what we can do? We can put a beast here. That way, if he hits one of these with... Uh, Control Slayers, they end up on the beast. Um, hang on. This is the guy we need there. Then these two come out a bit. And these two come in a bit. And I think I'd rather have him in central. Actually, I want him right in the middle out there. You can hide behind the beast. There we go. So if he uh, tries the same thing here and gets a push, then he's definitely rolling a red die on both sides. And even if he gets a knockdown on, on the red die, or on the first hit, he ends up on the beast. With his uh, troll slayers. Didn't move them. Nice catch though. And it's no longer sunny, so now we can pass. Easier. We just did. And there he goes, right into it, and it's a push. And he's gonna have to roll. Definitely don't re-roll that Dauntless, because even if he makes that Dauntless roll, it's a red die. Well, he managed to get a push. Let's see if he makes the same mistake on the other side. Because in that case, it's actually pretty stupid. Oh, I have to choose, of course. So now he's on Mighty Blow and Beast. And Mighty Blow, Pestivore, and an assist. Not where you want your uh, level 2 Troll Slayer. That's actually pretty useful. If he follows, then he can do this hit without having to worry. Could actually do that hit and push the Beast away all the way down to here. There he goes. Maybe this was his plan all along. Can't push the beast off though. 
Not in one push. Could have pushed the beast to here. But maybe he's planning to blitz on the beast. That's three assist, yeah, and there he goes. All appearance now would be amazing. Uh, unfortunately the beast goes down. Let's go out. He took the push. Why? He probably thought, well, I don't want it uh, down there. I'd rather want it pushed off to there. But he must have missed the stand farm part. Or maybe he thought he had blocked. Well, mistake either way. You definitely want to knock down the beast there when you have it. Now the beast to hit back. I'm not sure I can get to the ball though. But we have forced the dwarves to sort of uh, fall back a lot. Mm. Let's put a lot of strength on this side. Actually, we can't move this guy. I'd like to stand you up, please. And I think I want to hit with him. Well, we're gonna push him, of course. Sure, I'll push him here. We don't want this guy on the line. Oh. Well, let's reroll that. Let's not give him a freebie. This isn't great. Maybe we can fancy trap him again. We can put a guy here. We'll put him behind here. I'm not sure I dare to hit with the... I need some more assistance over on this side. I think I'll try to knock this guy down from here. There we go. don't want to follow though. That's a little bit too aggressive. But this gives him a minus one. Unless it means one of these guys. Which could be smart. Let's give him another minus one. So we don't have to worry about this dauntless too much. We couldn't bring a bunch of guys in here and hit this way. And you, I guess you're our safety. Actually, this guy's our safety. I guess you're our second safety. If I'd gotten knockdowns on the first few hits over here, then maybe I could have put more pressure on the ball. I think we're better off just keeping our line strong, let the dwarves roll the dice. Of course, tagging uh, 3 strength with a 4 strength means he has to bring 2 guys in to assist to make the hit safely and then we still have the he still has the risk of uh, foul appearance messing him up I think that's one way I, I played uh, Nurgle differently than Chaos or he can take a one night I guess and then of course he risks a one, one in three that he doesn't get, get him off when we get a hit to the attack. Here's the Dauntless. If it's a push, you know what happens, but this time it's a knockdown. It's a frenzy trap again. It didn't work this time. And these two both have uh, guards, so they provide assists. If you were to cancel him, he would have a one uh, actually he's already cancelled so yeah if you cancel him he would have a one die if the don't has worked uh, a two die not have worked but it's a it's a one die now i'm gonna stand firm even though i just went down and this guy's free to move to blitz here to an opening but really no way to move through safely Not a bad spot. 
It's a 50 percent dodge. Let's go get someone else. Aha, uh -huh, it's going to blitz him. Nice. So where does the ball carrier go? I need to go out here, and that's not possible. I need to go there. I was planning to stay here, maybe. No, he can't be there, because then we hit him from there. He goes out there, wow. That is super risky. We only need a GFI to hit him. We made the 50% dodge. Failed the first of two GFIs. Now, yeah, of course. Well, this pro provides us with a dilemma. Do we want to dodge and surf this guy, or do we want to just hit the ball carrier? I think we're gonna hit the ball carrier. So much for the dilemma, I suppose. Um, if we knock him down, we could get the beast to move up here. That's pretty good. I might want the movement of this guy instead, but uh, then again, he doesn't push him away like this guy can do. Just stay there so we can move next time. Now let's try to move the beast to here. Tie up some people. Move a warrior around. Before we make any other hasty moves, I kind of want to... Well, these two should stand up. It would be silly of me to not do that before I hit. Can't really get anyone into... to help. And this is a frenzy trap. We don't want to fall on our own sword here and take a frenzy trap. We could get two assists. Actually, yeah, two assists. And then this one assist. Be too bad. Let's get over here. One guy. You can still be a safety, but you can all, you can afford to be one closer to this side, so we don't have to GFI to the edge. And then try to make one GFI to have a two guy on the ball. Hmm. Push him here and follow. He knocks him down, he might knock him down. He could free it up actually. I'm gonna reroll that. That's better. Although that. Ugh, it leaves us in a surfable position. Where is this troll slave? This guy's not gonna do it. This guy might, but he's on the beast. So maybe I don't wanna hit him here. Then I push him off the beast. No, I can't push him off the beast. Okay, that'll do it. Okay, well then he's safe. Got any more problems for our opponent? It's gonna have to move in another assist. He wants a two die, he's gonna go for a one die. That's good enough. Follow this time? Yeah, this time he follows the okay, uh, the Nerve Warrior. He's been very reluctant to put his dwarfs next to Nerve Warrior. Oh, well done again. Pickup doesn't work, he rerolls it, that's his last reroll. Gets it. Fair enough. Oh boy. Can we free him up? Oh, that's a lot of indecision. But uh, I think he reached his destination. And now he needs to punch this guy. He does. And now he can punch him as well. If he follows. Which he needs to do. That's not the move. We can hit him, the two die. Stands up. This guy should have been standing as well. 
Lost the two guy. Unfortunately, he doesn't push me free. One die, and he spent his reroll. So that's terrible for our opponent. He should definitely make this hit first. Because that was a two die. Right, so what we could do is knock this guy preferably down. And then we could blitz ball carrier again. This is a bit of a problem. We really would like to to uh, mark him. But it's a risk because I could get surfed here. His troll slayers are still out of it, but uh, he could actually push me and surf him with someone else. So we need to get rid of this guy, so let's hope this is a knockdown. Mm, yeah, I need to reroll that because I didn't move every everybody. Okay, that's good. I can't follow because then I'd have to hit from here, and I think this guy has guard. Can't check now, so I'm gonna stay and have guard. Now I can hit from here. Which is good. Sadly, it means we're not going to get... One, two, three. I could hit with him. Is that better? And you can go up there. I can have this hit. I guess you stand up. I punch him if I want to. Mark over here. Get him upfield to score another touchdown in this roster. We should get the goat upfield instead. It's a little bit too early. Mm, let's go in there. Okay. Let's hit the ball carrier. That's never bad. Although in this case it didn't work. I'll do this and follow. Does he have enough to have one there? Let's do that. Thank you. Keep it on the rest. On the bench would have been even better. Hit there would be nice. I'm gonna make this hit. That's great. Now he's sort of out of it. God guy. Can almost not afford to stand up. Both these have got. If he stands up, he could hit him for one die. Two die if he moves there. And then he has a two die on him. So we kind of need to address that. If I put a guy here, then maybe that can't happen. Although I am leaving me myself open from chain push for chain pushes. But I hate to say it, but I kind of don't think this guy is going to be able to, to organize a chain push unless it's super obvious, like already set up for him. Actually, I don't see a way to set up a chain push right here. We can definitely surf this guy with a couple of lucky rolls. What he does is it prevents him from getting an assist here without pushing him first. Although it does allow him to get this guy in there, so maybe that was a bad move actually. Because now he can assist, which he couldn't have had. He couldn't have done if he'd been here. He gets a push. Ooh, there's the chain push. We can push him out to there. That doesn't give him a surf to me. He needs to stay there. No, he followed. If he had stayed, he could have hit this guy with a ball carrier. Or with this guy. With a two die. Now it's only a one die. He does it anyway. That's the third time he's knocked this guy down on a one die. So he's up the ball carrier, for sure. This guy is, however, dead. 
Still not dead, but he's off the pitch. Stunning in hell. <laughs> I don't think he would be trying that. Move there! Not. He tries to hit the beast with the red die. So this is gonna help you when there's enough people against you. Well, <clears throat> how many dwarves can we push out? I'm saying three. The answer, oh, however, is zero because our opponent gave up. And sadly, he saw what was, com what was coming as well. Well, that's fair enough. Pushing d dwarves into the uh, crowds is fun, but it doesn't really get us anywhere. And roll a six on the gold, plus the gold from our opponent. Rotterdam Ron gets uh, the MVP for his, for him not dying, even though he took an injury. And Shotai, the Nurgle Warrior, gets his first SCP. That's nice. He was on the line most of this game, so that, uh, that's well deserved. Five armor breaks on dwarfs. Pretty amazing. He only had three on us. Even though he took many more blocks. So we got a little bit lucky with the armor breaks. No SVP though. We didn't actually hurt any dwarfs. That pass though, that was pretty good. Alright, well we dwarves. We could use another rotter to have one spare. And a full team for our next team, next game. But that'll uh, that'll be next next time when I pick up that rotter. Maybe we want to keep our team value a little bit low though. That would bring us up to fourteen hundred, which is We'd be at risk of facing 1900 chaos or something like that. Which could be pretty devastating. Yeah, I don't think I'm ready to play against 1900 teams with this. Then again, it's not that much of a dif difference. And if I did play an 1860 team, wouldn't I want a uh, 12th player? It doesn't really matter because for our next game, our team value is going to be that anyway. So yeah, I'll probably buy another Rotter. I was hoping to get some from our opponents, but that's not going to happen, apparently. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this match, and I'll see you again next time.